Welcome into DC On Screen, the podcast that's been bringing news and reviews of the DC multiverse on film and television since 2015. I am your host, David Z. Robertson, and I am joined, as most ways, <laughs> I can't say that. As most ways? Well, yeah. I, <laughs> sorry. I'm your host, David C. Robertson, and I am joined, as most ways, by the incomparable Jason Goss. Hi. <laughs> How you feeling, man? I'm still smirking at how bad that was. It's fantastic. Oh man, never gonna have to leave it. It was incomparable. <sighs> Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's happening to me? <laughs> uh, just, just some, just shake it off, man. Just yeah, Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift that it. shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got this. I believe uh-huh. in you. Uh huh. I did want to, um, in case anyone didn't notice, uh, or if you're new to the show, we put out an episode last week, and there is an extended version of that episode. There's about eight or nine minutes extra on that version, and it's exclusively on Patreon, patreon.com slash DC on screen. And uh, there is that. From time to time, we have extended episodes. Like, I, I know we have patrons who were like, you know what? I wanted to hear the eight minute conversation about golf. <laughs> I didn't feel like most people would, so I cut it out. But I left it in the extended version. It's so. it's it's not in the scope of our our general. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's not our bailiwick, so to speak. But yeah, <clears throat> we somehow made eight minutes out of golf, and you know, go for it. It was fun. I it was a it. fun conversation. We well, that's why like, we get sidetracked, is we enjoy talking about things. We don't like golf. We're not like golfers or anything. I actually do like golf. I'm just not Well, a you like golf, yeah. but you're not a golfer. Yeah. We weren't like getting, you know, well, what was the term? <laughs> like if somebody wanted to pay for it, I'll yeah. go play right now. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> we weren't getting inside baseball on golf. Yeah. <laughs> they were just childhood stories. But anyway, mm-hmm. moving on. Let's talk about the news that we've got today. A lot of some some really cool news. Um, this is not cool news. Uh, CinemaCon <laughs> is happening there. Yeah, okay. I know CinemaCon. This is a warning. We have some great things coming. Oh, not this first one. Shit, I forgot. That's almost <laughs> what that sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I set things up in the notes like this on purpose, just because I know we're gonna have some kind of weird banter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. CinemaCon, it is not a general public ticketed event. It is an annual gathering for movie theater owners. They will be having a screening of The Flash at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas on the 25th of April, right after a a special presentation highlighting WBD's upcoming release slate. It'll show from uh, 4.45 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. I tell you all this because the first social media reactions are expected to release online immediately after that. So if you don't want to get spoiled, I would suggest taking intense care on social media. Um, (sighs) Mute the flash on Twitter. Just stay away in general, whatever you do. But uh, that is your warning. The movie does not premiere until uh, June June, June 16th. So uh, be be very... um, wary of that i almost said uh take intense care on on the social meds mm. but my friend amy messaged me and said i heard you say social meds and the next time i see you i'm going to punch you mm-hmm. yeah so i believe um, i took you to task on that as well yeah so i'm a little afeard <laughs> i'm much more a fan of a feared <laughs> you said the 25th of april right yeah, let me let so, me. So actually, just, it's the same day that the new trailer drops. Right. Yeah. So just watch the trailer is is my advice, um, and then uh, throw your phone in the lake. Yeah. Watch the trailer and then nope out. Yeah. Until June. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. I don't want any spoilers to something I've waited for for this long. I can wait another couple months. Fuck mm-hmm. all that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I might even like mute the lightning emoji if that's possible. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. We'll find out. I just take spoilers. I don't care. I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I just want to enjoy a thing. Yeah. I I like to enjoy a thing, but, you know, it's 
It's all. It's like you know how I didn't care about watching Fringe until you told me you spoiled like the first season for me, and I was like, "Holy shit, they're doing that!" And then I wanted to see it. Like sometimes it. I mean, yeah, me that, up. enticing is one thing, but you know when I'm already going to do it, then I'm like, "No, I'm. I'm I don't want the other stuff." Yeah, I hear you. I feel you. James Gunn posted a picture of the title page of. The Superman Legacy script. He Mm -hmm. says, I'm honored to be a part of the legacy. And what better day than Superman's anniversary uh, to dive fully into early pre-production on Superman Legacy costumes, production design, and more now up and running. Beautiful. So, yeah, that's that's happening. That is happening. And he did, by the way, confirm. You wish you had telescopic vision on that fucking photo, though? I, I mean, I don't know what it would help me. You can't see through it. I mean, I know, I'm just saying, like, uh, I wish I had, like, some fucking weird CIA technology that no one knows about where I could, well, actually, if you do this contrast, you can see the next page. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, someone, <laughs> someone was like, now show us the first page, and he's like, I just did. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair play, you cunt. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. And uh, someone asked him, anyone stand out to you in casting for Superman? And he says, yes, we have some incredible choices. I'm incredibly excited and relieved. So they're already doing casting. They're already looking at that. Just in case um, you're worried that the pre-production part didn't include the word casting. Mm-hmm. And someone asked if Jimmy Olsen would be in Superman Legacy. And James Gunn said, of course. Which I think, and I haven't I hadn't thought of it quite this way in relation to James Gunn, but this made me think this is one of the primary reasons Gunn decided to soft reboot Snyderverse in the first place, because characters like Jimmy Olsen, those audience proxy characters, they are not really something that Snyder did a ton of. He was looking to really, you know, tell this epic tale about iconic gods. And in fact, Snyder he, he wanted to focus on the mains for sure. Snyder killed Jimmy Olsen yeah. in his first appearance back in BVS, which, right. as much as I love Snyder's work, was one of the big points of contention I had years ago. Because to me, killing characters like Jimmy Olsen, or even people like Richard Grayson, the original Robin, aka Nightwing, almost felt like shock value short sightedness at the time. I mean, now I, I think, you know, I mean, Zach has repeatedly said uh, that the plan post JL3 was to reboot the universe afterward, and that would have worked fine. But I think it is important to note that there are reasons, from a storytelling perspective, why a new creator would want to reboot. And I think Zack having taken toys off the table, iconic toys off the table, might be a big reason. And I could see it, for sure. Uh, I don't mind his version, though, as far as... um, The audience proxies are also kind of the weak spots, and like the the things that get be. hurt around these iconic characters, so mm-hmm. I didn't mind that he kind of showed that like yeah there are consequences. And Blue the people, Snyder, yeah Snyder. I mean uh, like the yeah. the people you love don't make it always like that Grayson costume kind of thing. Yeah, you know which that was somewhat of an easy fix if you made him Jason Todd, but oh hundred percent. I man, I'd love to like. I say I, I kind of don't want to talk to Zach because I don't have questions, but I do. I'm like I, I want to be like. Why was it Dick? <laughs> like, what exactly? Like, I need to, I need to know certain things. I've always um, said that if if we talked, we'd probably just talk about Soundgarden for an hour. Oh yeah, uh, which I'm it, perfectly capable of. I wonder if we could, if we ever did get a Zach interview, could like I do the first half and you do the second half and narrow the Twain mix, like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't want to talk about Soundgarden. Yeah, you do the film stuff, and then I'm just, I just—I just want to bro out about '90s music. Yeah, yeah. You you sit over there and talk to him about Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> You're God of all the people. That's why I said it. I was taking a sip of pink lemonade. I thought I was going to spit it. <laughs> I'm glad it was a sip. Someone on Twitter asked Gunn, I assume you're going to be announcing who you cast as Superman by the end of this month. If not, next month. Is that a correct assumption to make? And Gunn said, it is not. (laughs) You have your answer. (laughs) No. So, the Russo brothers, Mm -hmm. 
we know them. They directed uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity Wars, Endgame, all that Marvel stuff. Um, Some of the more Im- amazing out of what it was already an amazing series of Community. Yes. And Arrested Development. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, um, comicbook.com was talking to those guys about maybe doing a DC project. And they said, uh, obviously, James Gunn over there running it, it would be a no-brainer. We love him to death. We love the direction he's going to take that world in. You know he's going to be inventive with it. And favorite DC characters? I mean, man, there are so many good ones. I always answer based on the comics I collected as a kid. And the two comics I collected the most were Spider-Man. Actually, the three were Spider-Man, X-Men, and Batman. But there have been a lot of iterations of Batman. So I feel like that's an obvious answer. And Anthony Russo added, here's how you know we haven't actually gotten literal about it and specific about it. Because, yeah, Batman would be my favorite character for my entire childhood. But obviously it's been well explored. Now, that kind of set the internet ablaze with the idea that they might be interested in doing Batman the Brave and the Bold. Mm -hmm. And then later at a red carpet event for Citadel, uh, comicbook.com's Chris Killian talked to them and they clarified, we are not directing a Batman movie. Usually we come with a, with a very entertaining fringe character, but you caught us in a moment where we were so tired that we couldn't think of any funny fringe DC character. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But someone on Twitter asked James Gunn, uh, saying, you know, Russo brothers just said they're indeed interested in a DCU project. Would you be opposed to that idea? James Gunn said, no, I love those guys. <laughs> I, I would have thought his response would be absolutely not or something like that. But yeah. And and by the way, can I just say, because I'll get to it in a minute, but um, in case you're one of those like, ah, oh, Russo brothers, Marvel coming in, bootlicking James Gunn lovers. Uh, they just had like a told two part podcast, Pizza Film School. This is their podcast, the Russo brothers podcast, where they were geeking out over Zack Snyder's Justice League with Zack Snyder. I haven't like, listened to that. I've heard about it. It sounds delightful. Whole damn interview. It's really not so uh, not so divided in Hollywood, guys. No. I feel like if you really let them off the leash, like it, you caught them like 830 in the morning with a Starbucks still in their hand or something. What are you thinking? Like, I don't know, maybe Murmur, Creeper, something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Murmur. It's, gonna be, it's a very quiet film. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's a murmur and um, onomatopoeia team up. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first half of the film, we think it's Bruce Wayne, but it's it's Hush. Just yeah. The, just the whole time. That might be fun. Mm-hmm. So James Gunn, someone asked him, uh, I'm curious if WB gave you notes on Superman Legacy and how did you receive them? Because his script is done, by the way. Mm-hmm. Gunn says, no, WB wouldn't be giving me notes on a DC Studios production. Since we came on board, we're two separate entities within WB. And then a separate person asked, then who who at DC gives you notes? And Gunn responds, it's interesting to see the numerous responses to my answer here about how notes work in Hollywood. From when I began writing... I have given my scripts and stories to many different trusted parties for notes. Listening to constructive criticism is the lifeblood for any writer. So as the head of DC Studios, I give the script to people I trust, like my exec, Chantel Nong, or DC Comics writer, Tom King. Hell yeah. Love that he's involved in that. I know. So much. So fucking much. I'm going to buy that man a baseball cap. (laughs) <laughs> and get their thoughts about what works well and what could work better so I can improve the script. To paraphrase Stephen King, first draft door closed, second draft door open. Writing is communication, so this is important. All that said, I've never, as a director, been given notes I was ordered to take. Not from Universal on Slither, from Marvel and the Guardians films, nothing. I've always tried to take the notes that will actually make the film better, and I argue about the ones I think won't work. This process has worked for me because I have been blessed in the partners I've chosen to work with. We are all moving towards one thing, making the movie better. And I can put my ego aside and be open when I need to be and convincing when I need to be. I know this is not the case for everyone. 
and it wasn't always the case for me as a writer. Again, I'm blessed in this way, but that's how notes work, and I'm not going to suddenly stop taking them because I'm the head of a studio. Uh, it sounds judicious. I, I like it. I do too. I'm down. I'm excited. I, I really like the clarification, though, that like, no, don't seriously. Let me explain. Th- this is my call. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is me and Saffron. We're doing this. But yeah, of course, he's reaching out to people. Of course. I I love that Tom is one of them. Yeah, that, that makes me very happy. So uh, in the affirmation, affirmation, aforementioned, <laughs> in the aforementioned Pizza Film School podcast by the Russo brothers. They had Zach on Zach Snyder and uh, Snyder was talking about how justice league was split into chapters to give an intermission for viewers. He says, originally we had talked about doing the movie as six parts released separately, but then there were some legal rules Snyder said. And then Joe Russo said there were things regarding TV contracts for the cast. If the movie were split into a series and how payments would be handled differently. Mm -hmm. And Snyder said, everyone was like, ah, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Which is what you and I talked about years ago. Now, (laughs) when Snyder cut was released or before it was released, we were like, oh no, that's probably a different, it's probably a different kind of TV. It's a whole different set of rules for TV versus movie, man. Yeah. Yep. 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 I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you know, That was clarified that we were right. (laughs) (laughs) And this was fun. On the same podcast, Snyder said um, they were discussing the subject of how they go through the writing process for their films with uh, them both, both the Russos and Snyder agreeing that they prefer a process of like puzzle style note cards on a wall that shift and move around as they find the story and the sequences of the film. Um, And Zach says, And so the script for Justice League did evolve out of that process. Now, I'll be honest that when the script, what happened with Justice League is that we had a very, the original script was darker and weirder. And then when Superman, Batman v Superman came out and the studio was like, it's not funny enough. People want funnier movies. They want funny stuff. We did go back and do a kind of lightened the movie overall. And I would say that my cut of Justice League is a sort of in between. I always preserved some of the more intense stuff that I shot anyway, that I thought in retrospect they would want anyway. Clearly. Making sure, of course, uh, I had what was on the page, but we had this other script. I think in the original script, Lois and Batman got together briefly. There was this whole other thing that everyone was like, oh my God, you can't do that. Because Superman's dead. And I was like, Lois is a pretty amazing person. Her part in Justice League is really especially since I had Amy and Amy's like a genius. I really felt like we should lean on Amy because she's just a great actress, a force of nature. And that I love the idea of setting up this concept, like in the movie where the husband goes off to war and he's dead and the wife moves on. And then the husband appears like, I'm not dead. I'm fine. How do you deal with that? I was super into that concept that, Oh no, Superman can be brought back to life. So now what happens with this? And it was that Lois was like, I'm still in love with Superman. You were a thing. And at that point, Batman had already fallen in love with Lois. Mm. I I love that idea. And the original idea as well was that Lois would have been pregnant with Batman's baby. Yeah, I remember that part. Now, a lot and a lot of people hate that too, but that would have thematically really worked really well. Stephen uh Stephen Colbert um, I'll, I'll post his article in the description, but he lays it out really well in a way I really loved, but you know, thematically going from, there's a line in man of steel that, that had kind of been set up where like Jorel is talking about loving, not just superior bloodlines essentially. And Superman becoming an adopted son. And at the end, Superman yeah, would be transferring ra- to adopting a son. Effectively, he would be raising Bruce's son. Yeah, Bruce Kent. And of course, we know Bruce was supposed to jump in front of the Omega beams and kill himself or sacrifice himself right before taking out Darkseid to save Lois. Um, so, and that's also a thing that would have happened. Like that was thematic within hmm. the other parts of the story like someone sacrificing themselves, you know, for the next thing. 
uh, for the for the child. Yeah, I mean uh, it would make sense yeah. and has some beautiful drama. You know, basically like a projectile getting in front of that to protect a child, much like much like how he was born. You know, like mm-hmm. it, there's beauty to that script. The only part of it that would bother me in general it 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 makes all the metaphorical sense, and there's nothing in it that doesn't track as far as the characters and the actors would have done great with it. He's right. Mm-hmm. The only thing that would bother me is a little bit of just my personal problem. This is on me entirely is just a little bit of like uh, a little bit of, how do I put it? Um, just being tired of that fucking storyline of people cheating on people. Well, no, it's not cheating. Oh, I know. I know that's not that, but it, it'll lean on those concepts. Uh, there, there's like for thing Superman, so- he would have come back and just nothing would be different except, oh my God, everything is. Yeah. And, but that part would have bored me a little bit and that's, that's entirely on me. It, it, they would have, yeah. they would have done it great. I just, what doesn't bore me is the idea that like, you know, you, you do have people who die like veterans, people who get killed like in the, in the military. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like they're their wife goes on to, you know, be comforted by and then wind up marrying, you know, their best friend or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of, like, even within the community of people who are, like, judging them for that. And that would be interesting to see, you know, uh, a bit of judgment for for uh, uh, Bruce and Lois. Like, you know, Superman's dead. How could you have done that? Why are you together? This is bullshit. And it makes sense. It makes sense. And it's the whole, you know, as Stephen po- points out in his article, um, it really is. It's, it's, it's Excalibur. It's Lancelot and Arthur. Like, <laughs> oh, 100%. No. It, all the story validity is there. I just, mm-hmm. the, the triangle thing bores me a little bit these days. Yeah. But I, I think I think Snyder could have done it well. And I, I really wish we had gotten to see that. I mean, even saying the story, let me put it this way. Even me saying that, uh, Right now, if six months from now we got to actually watch that movie just in a different universe, Mm -hmm. I would probably still later say the triangle bored me a little bit, but it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I I have full faith in the creative process there. Yeah. All right. Uh, You want to hit a quick break and we can go to TV? Yeah. Knock her out. Cool, man. All right. We are back from our break here. And um, look. I don't want to go into big spoilers here. Uh, as most of you probably know, Titans is in its final season. If you are not caught up with Titans on HBO Max and you're looking for some of that multiversal feeling that CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths gave you, there is a big Doom Patrol Titans Stargirl crossover happening over there. Uh, we reported on this thing months ago, but uh, Beast Boy gets thrown into a place between dimensions. It is totally a 3D render of Grant Morrison's multiverse map. And (laughs) Gar encounters several snippets and scenes and characters throughout DC on-screen history, everything from visual clips to audio and actual interactions. And I'm talking DCEU, CW animation, classic television snippets here. It is worth a watch. It is very cool. Uh, There's even a really fun cameo from someone in our universe. Check that shit out. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i'm on it and this is really exciting um neil gaiman has confirmed that dead boy detectives which we just found out was not going to be hbo max or max as it's about to be called it was going to netflix but he confirms that dead boy detectives is part of the netflix sandman universe hmm. and to me that is super exciting because it says that they are you know, confident enough in Sandman as a property that they're willing to make another show part of that universe and include stuff. Hmm. And the fact that, you know, Netflix bought it from HBO Max. Like, I just, I love it. I'm I'm all about it. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. What started as a Doom Patrol spinoff now is actual Sandman universe with, with Netflix. I'm all about it. I'm I'm down. Yeah, and with with it being something that's like under the Neil Gaiman umbrella of <laughs> kind of he he's a he's a demigod for DC, you know? Like mm-hmm. it, 
with I him mean, in not charge. Not just for DC. <laughs> well, yeah, for writing in general, frankly. But with with him being attached at all, like what he can pull off as far as saying, no, I think this needs to be involved in the universe. It could be really fun. I mean, hell, that, that's probably how that happened. Mm-hmm. I'll say this, man. I, I am a huge fan of Chuck Palahniuk. I am a huge Stephen King fan. I have read both of their books on writing. I learned many things. Um, I feel like I get just as much uh, knowledge out of a Neil Gaiman tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also took Neil Gaiman's master class. So. <laughs> yeah, I get it. All righty, man. We've, we've got some feedback. We're done with news. Uh, we've got some for feedback now. for now. Yeah, we'll yeah. be back on Patreon. Dr. Steve of weird medicine says, thanks boys. Been missing the show. Amazing. How all of a sudden all the interesting stuff is truly at Warner DC. You know what, man? I don't know that I agree with you, but I'm glad you feel that way. But you know, I'm a Trekkie. I'm loving what Paramount plus is doing over there with star Trek. You know, I'm really excited about a lot of the Marvel stuff coming down the pike. I. Uh, I I just like all the things, man. I don't like all the things, but I'm excited about several things. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know much about Paramount, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I mean, not 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 truly. The um I mean, their biggest properties are Star Trek and uh Mission Impossible. You know, like I don't care about Mission Impossible too much, but Star Trek? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I get that. I I kind of and well I say that as somebody who 24 hours ago was in in an office with uh, somebody talking about how much oh my god I I just got Paramount to watch one show and just I it's amazing and okay great yeah I mean there's a lot of good stuff on the on the on the um, streaming service for for sure yeah I mean I think Paramount Plus is yeah they've got the new SEAL Team season which is really fantastic and it's one of those great shows SEAL Team is one of those great shows where like when you go to TV time and you see people's reactions to it, like the extreme liberals are angry because it's clearly just like American propaganda. Mm. And then like the conservatives are angry because it's totally woke. And, <laughs> and to me that, that makes me happy because I'm like, that means it's actually a good show. Like <laughs> they're hitting all the beats. People are getting pissed off on both sides. That means it's going to be everyone's good. pissed. We hit a point. We hit yeah. a note. No, it's actually like really good storytelling. Yeah. Like it's Boreanis is killing it. Like, um, but yeah, like all I'm, the, they've, I'm not surprised that, you know, 25 years later or whatever it is that he's still a good actor. Mm hmm. He was great when I met him. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, Paramount plus has the 1923 Yellowstone spinoff with Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of things. Dear God, I don't care about the Yellowstone saga, but oh my God, the people around me at work are mm-hmm. fucking like enthralled with it. And what cracks me up though, is like the whole time they're talking about that. I'm like, Oh yeah, that sounds okay. Um, have y'all watched Ted Lasso? Right. <laughs> I'm just saying there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of quality programming on Paramount plus. Uh, there's this rabbit hole show with, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, another spy show. It looks like it's look, basically looks like a new season of 24 to me, but, uh, <laughs> this Jeremy Renner mayor of Kingstown looks pretty cool. Um, Tulsa King with Stallone. I have heard like, great things about Kingstown. 50 new Star Trek shows a week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If I was going to get it for anything, it'd be to catch up on the Star Trek stuff that like, I know enough about the syndicated shows that I watched that I could probably like, I would miss a lot of references, but I could probably get into the Paramount ver- version. I'll do you one better, man. I'll do you one better. What you can that? use our, you can use our login, create a new profile. Don't say that on, on air. Jesus. <laughs> Why? I've broken some kind of law. Oh, like, no, no, this, these $2 out of my $7 goes to Jason <laughs> and his profile. I do. I do feel like, because I, I think you have Apple <laughs> right now. It was like, I'll, I'll just let you share my Apple TV, uh, you know, login and just like the recording would cut out. Yeah. Well, no, I'm literally using yours. Yeah. If you could just borrow my, uh, my Netflix pack. <laughs> Oh, God. 
If you will watch Star Trek, you can have our login. I already told your wife that we you, she could have our Paramount Plus login because she's given us the Apple login. So <laughs> like, I was Please. unaware. I want to watch Ted Lasso. Okay. I was unaware. Actually, I think I have my own Apple login. Oh, do you? Yeah. No, I'm. Uh, yeah, we're using your wife's. <laughs> um, it is not to do with me. The Apple policeman cannot show up at my door. Mm. Oh well. Uh, Ryan Salazar at gmail dot com. Uh, no, that's not his actual email address. Sorry. Uh, they, he. <laughs> I'm gonna write down that time. I'm gonna change that. <laughs> it's actually not his email, but that's weird. Ryan Salazar writes to us in email. Uh, by the way, you can send the emails to DC on screen at gmail.com. Uh, this was the person who said, uh, why is my name always taken on Apple last week and gave us a five star review. And then at the end of his review said three out of five. <laughs> nice. Said, I figured I'd have to explain this one. It's from another podcast called Time Suck. The host went on a tangent about how people giving two to four uh, stars but giving rave reviews about the product slash restaurant in the body of the review drives him crazy. Figured y'all would appreciate the humor. You you listen to Time Suck. I do. And yes, I absolutely get it. <laughs> Dan Cummins puts it as like, oh, it's the most, it's the best thing I've ever seen. Th- three out of five. <laughs> Changed my life for the better. Never could have survived without it. Three out of five stars. No. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely get that fine. reference and fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure, but it's all right. It's all right. Um, Arlo underscore L on Apple Podcasts leaves us a review. Five stars called DC on screen on ears. Beam the DC content into my eyes and send the humiferous hum- humoriferous commentary directly into my ears. <laughs> Three out of five. <laughs> Shout out to Giuseppe. Nice. <laughs> and uh, TJ Stafford. Love the crossover also, event here. <laughs> mm-hmm. TJ Stafford also on Apple says, gives us five stars. It says, never a dull moment. I've never been one to follow the news aspect of DC media. I was content to just see the stuff when it came out. But this cast has made the news fun. And I look forward to every episode. Beautiful. Oh, man. Thank you. That makes me feel good. Now, TJ and I am Arlo. such a bastard, though, when he says never a dull moment. I want to be like, let's leave five minutes of silent air in the fucking recording. Yeah, you are a bastard. Yeah, I am terrible <laughs> and, and can't be trusted. I'm, I'm deeply grateful you're around. Mm. Well, TJ, Arlo, uh, you're in the giveaway and the giveaway is done now. So here's what we do. You're going to write us at, at dconscreen at gmail.com and we will send you your code for uh, Batman the Doom that came to Gotham. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank you for the uh, reviews there. On Twitter, uh, NerdyTastic says, I was the one screaming Marlowe in my head during your podcast discussion of Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> I got there eventually. <laughs> I'm sorry for the I'm sorry for the mental torture I put you through though <laughs> oh god that's funny <laughs> I, I knew I, I knew I, that was I, so fucking simple I always just feel so bad about someone that someone was going to be mad about it yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. well yeah. I think that wraps up this episode of DC on screen that's all I've got Let's call it. Cool. Um, if you are interested in extra content, uh, we're 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 brewing some up, and um, I don't think we'll have any this episode. But last episode, like I said, we had an extended episode that was Patreon exclusive. So if you want to do that, patreon.com slash DC on screen. You can write to us on Twitter or Instagram at DC on screen. You can send us an email, DC on screen at gmail.com. All over the place, y'all. Uh, we're on Facebook from time to time. <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. But, um, yeah. 
in just three days, the Flash trailer drops. And uh, so we should, we're, we'll at least have a new episode that week, next week. This coming week is what I mean. And uh, we'll at least talk about that. I'm sure more things are coming. Because James Gunn just won't stop using Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Until next time, keep some DC on your screen. Our intro music is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford. Michael's band, Galactic Engineers of Magnetic Sounds, or GEMS, can be found on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Visit DCOnScreen.com to find our Patreon, merch, contact information, and every episode of the show for free, including crossovers we've done with other podcasts. DC On Screen is a maladjusted production. For more from me and Jason, including sketch comedy, vlogs, parodies, and our improvised web series Hey Guy, visit maladjusted.tv.